Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ugona Doris and this is Mommy Treats YouTube. In today's episode, I will be talking about the things you should not ignore after your child delivery. If you are a mom to be or you know someone who is about to have her bundle of joy, this is a must watch video from you, from me to you to the person. So sit and watch. The first thing you should know as a new mom, a mom to be, is that bonding with your new child or your baby is very, very essential. Have you tried asking yourself, why is it that immediately after delivery, the first thing the nurses or the midwives do is to make sure your body comes in contact with that of your child? This is simply because they want you to bond with your child. And notice that immediately you push your baby out, the first thing they do is to start crying. And when they are being carried and placed on you, they stop crying. This is because when, they come, when their body comes in contact with you, when they feel that they are in a safer place, they will be calm. That is what bonding with the child does to that child. It makes the child feel safe and cared for. Another is that breastfeeding has a way, not, not that it has a way, breastfeeding is another good way of bonding with your child. You know, that moment when you are carrying your child, they will always tell you to make sure your skin Make sure your baby feels the warmth of that skin when you are breastfeeding him or her. And also, if you are, if you are a mom, be it a mom of one, two, three, have you noticed? Now I'm talking out of all of this. I'm talking. I'm speaking out of experience. Have you noticed that when you start breastfeeding your baby, that moment you are breastfeeding it. That they will, they will be looking at you if they are circling on your on your nipple you will see them trying try i don't know and, and sometimes i wonder i'll be asking why they are giving us why they are, why my baby is giving me that gaze it was later i got to understand that that moment you are breastfeeding your child and he or she is always raising up the head to look at you they are trying to know you, they are trying, and that is another way of them getting used to you, knowing you very fast than the other people. That is why, uh, even at maybe one month or two months, once you, you enter any room where your child is, you will see that you will be crying and then looking out for you to carry him or her. That is because they already use, they already know you. It is another way of building a strong connection and relationship. That's the bonding I'm talking about with your child. Breastfeeding is very, 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 very essential. And I know that it is, it's not even easy to breastfeed. I must tell you, breastfeeding is not easy. It's not easy at all, especially if that child you have is your first child. Now, I will tell you that the feeling I had the first time I was breastfeeding my first child, truth, is not the same with the one I had when I, the first time I was breastfeeding gospel, my second. And it's not even the same feeling I had the third time I was breastfeeding my baby girl, Amazing Light. Truth being my first child, the first time I had truth, the first Weak truth lashed on my nipple. Oh my goodness. If not throughout the first two weeks, let me not exaggerate, let me just say seven between seven to fourteen days. Oh my dear. All through that period, especially from the set from the third day of breastfeeding him. Once my baby is lashing on the nipple. God, I will start crying. I will start shouting. I will start screaming because the pain is not. Is I'm telling you, it, 
it's not even something I can explain. And then I think after one week or two weeks, the pain restarts because even at the, during that period, you tend to start having a little, ra not, not rashes, but just little bruises, just little. Is bruise the right word for it? Let me just say bruise, little bruises around the nipple. Those are the things that make you feel the that those, those are the things that cause that pain. And it enters, it gets, to, when it gets to your medulla, you won't even know when you start screaming and shouting not to of your voice. And then when I had gospel, the same thing happened to me, but not as intense as the first one. Then when I had my third baby, last four months plus now, it wasn't like that. I never, I didn't even feel any pain. I didn't feel any pain. The, the more babies you're having, the more chances that you are not going to have a sore nipple when you're breastfeeding. This is out of, I'm speaking out of experience. And another thing why breastfeeding is good, you know that the first extract that comes out of your breast when you start breastfeeding your child it's called crustrum it's very very important and it is yellowish in color this crustrum they will tell you to please make sure your baby lashes on that nipple very well so that he or she will get enough of that crustrum because that crustrum helps in fighting it helps in building that baby's immunity I tell you it is very very important and I think it comes the first three days or so or more of of um first three days after the child delivery please make sure you put this into concentration even if you don't have your mind breastfeeding your child or to but you see these first three days or first few first seven days of after your child delivery please make sure that, that child succumbs on that breast and get that crystal because it is good to help in building that baby's immunity okay and there is something another thing i will tell you breastfeeding does to you as a new mom that you don't know you know in my home country where i'm coming from nigeria there is this traditional practice we we do or we adopted that when once a woman delivers a child that the mom that came from Mugo or any available adult or even the husband will help in pressing the woman's stomach with hot water it helps in flattening the woman's stomach and also help in removing the remaining blood that is the remnants from the woman's uh, body and sure, you know that I'm residing in Qatar. I'm not in my home country where my mom or mother-in-law or even anybody can help me with such. I have, I only did that when I had truth and it was just three times. I only did it three times. One of my secrets in having that little, I won't say my stomach is so flat, but at least in having a better stomach after delivery is breastfeeding and another secret of mine and another secret of mine in removing the remnants from my body is also breastfeeding now you ask me why how have you noticed that as a new mom that you, you don't only feel pain on your breast but also on your abdomen your abdomen you know when when your baby sucking or is latching or is milking that breast hmm? your nutrient your uterus will be constricting it will be constricting so when the baby is lashing on it and let me say the baby is lashing and then this is your uterus and then once the baby start lashing it will be constricting what do you think will be happening to that uh to that uterus when it starts constricting that is when the remaining blood if there is any blood any pool of blood that is still seated there that is the moment they will start coming out 
you know, as you are, as it's constricting, the blood will be constricting it well, constricting the muscle, the blood will be flowing. That's another way I get rid of excess or remnants blood remaining in my uterus after the delivery of my child. That is it. And as by so doing, once he's doing that thing, it's also affecting the, the walls of your stomach. I don't know about another person, but I've noticed it's so... I'm a mom of three, and I've noticed that once after breastfeeding my child, I would, I would feel like there is nothing left in my stomach. I would be having the feeling of an empty stomach. My stomach would be so empty that I would start requesting for something to eat. Another thing I want you to put in mind after delivering your child is to make sure you are you always exercise. Now, the exercise I mean is not you involving yourself in rigorous activities, no. You can start exercising even while you are still at that hospital waiting for your discharge. You can stand up from your bed and walk. Always ensure to walk. This will help in preventing the coagulation of your blood, especially on your leg. You know, there is what we call in the medical terms thromboembolism. This is the trouble is the coagulation of blood, maybe due to inactivities, okay? And then the embolism is for that coagulated blood to dislodge, that's to move from where it's coagulated to maybe any organ in your body. And you know, once such thing gets to any of your organ, it can damage that organ, and it can even lead to death or disability. So that is why involving yourself in little and not strenuous activities will help so that's why i always tell people after your delivery so long as you're not having much pain please just always try and walk around your bed or your room or even on that hospital passage and then when you get home still continue all right and then another is for you never never to ignore pain be it like even though the pain is as small as a mustard seed even though it is between the scale of 0 to 10 with 0 being no pain and then, then be 10 being severe pain even if it is 1 on the scale please report every pain you are having don't ignore it especially if the pain is on the leg if it is on the abdomen if it is anywhere report the only thing the medical or healthcare professionals you do is to assess and then give you the right medication and tell you to, how to go about it please do not ignore pain do not ignore pain okay uh, another thing you should note as a new mom is to always ask for help always don't feel that you can do everything don't get yourself worked up don't try to stress yourself because you've already undergone so much stress already try to seek help as much as you can and then for those of us that are away from home residing outside our country just try not to involve in too much chores do the little one you can do rest and continue tomorrow and our mother will always tell us once your child, your new child, your new baby starts sleeping, ensure you sleep with that child. Make sure to go to bed too with that child. People like me that don't get uh, that don't get to feel asleep, fall asleep easily. Once my child starts sleeping and I try to sleep and the sleep sleep is not coming forth, what I do is just to shut down everything, try not to watch television try not to press my phone, try not to get into any house chores or any other activity to just remain calm, I will be on the bed, cover myself and then get dressed. Before I will know it, I will fall asleep from there. So that when the child is waking up, you will also be waking up. And then by so doing, you will be strong for yourself, for your baby and for the family. Another 
is to always, always, and always uh, take your postnatal or post baby delivery appointments very serious, especially if you know you had complications while pregnant or during child delivery. Some persons have what we call gestational diabetes, that is having a rise in their blood sugar level during pregnancy. Or some people have gestational high, hypertension, that is their blood pressure going high or increasing during um, child labor and during delivery. You know, such persons, sometimes they spend more days in the hospital because the hospital will still want to track and to make sure that either your hypertension normalizes or the level of your blood sugar normalizes before you get this child. And sometimes they tell you that, especially for some persons that have gestational di um, hypertension, they will tell you that the that your blood pressure will not, that sometimes it doesn't get, it doesn't normalize uh, quickly. Most times it takes two weeks or more to normalize. But the main thing for you, the main thing I would advise you is if you are being uh, prescribed any anti-hypertensive medication or anti-diabetic medication after delivery, please make sure you take it serious. Take your medication and while at it, make sure you are tracking. Make sure you're always checking your blood pressure or checking your blood sugar. Okay? And also, if while taking that, those medications, if you notice any side effects, if you notice anything unusual, report to your healthcare provider. It is very, very important. Okay? And if you have been given an appointment, any appointment, take it serious. Do not fail to meet with your healthcare provider or meet up with your appointment, your postnatal appointment. I hope this is very helpful. For some people that always struggle after delivery you know the struggle i mean here is some persons to have mental health issues after delivery there is what we call baby blue and, and also um uh postpartum depression okay if you find yourself or if you notice that you are feeling some kind of way you're always experiencing anxiety or you are always quiet or you are, you are, if you notice that your behavior is is quite unusual from the normal and that you find yourself not being so happy please seek medical attention be sure to meet with uh, a health uh, mental health practitioner that can help you pass through the face okay don't try to ignore any signs of you having mental problems it can affect you it can also affect the child you are taking care of and also affect the other members of the family and i'm sure you wouldn't want that for yourself for your baby and for your family okay so if you notice any of this be sure to meet a mental health expert a practitioner lay your concerns and I, and trust me they will help you okay the last and not the least is you not ignoring what you take that's your nutrition i will advise as a new mom i even want to be what you eat matters a lot especially when you know that you have another life in you you need that child i'm very sure nobody wants his or her child not to be fed well or not having the right nutrients they need for their growth and development so that's what i'm telling you make sure you pay attention to what you consume and also do not forget to take a lot of water water is very essential like me when i'm breastfeeding once my baby lashes on that nipple you will see me demanding for water i'll tell anybody available please get me some water if i'm taking tons and tons of water and also I noticed that when I take water, it helps in producing more milk for my baby. And also knowing that your baby's nutrients, the nutrients they receive, they have, is wholly dependent on you. 
Nobody will tell you to take what you're eating very serious. So please, always ensure that you consume a healthy and a balanced meal for yourself and for your baby. Okay? I hope this is helpful. This is my own little contribution of what you should know before and after your baby's delivery. Okay? I spoke out of experience and out of the little knowledge I've gained. You know they say knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. Some persons, they don't have the access to that knowledge. They knew they already had the access. Why not do them good by sharing this video with them? Hmm? You don't know, you never can tell, you'll be saving a life through this video. Thank you for always staying connected. Until my next video, please do take care of yourself. And I will see you. Ciao, ciao.